Okay. Uh, so thanks for the organizer for giving the opportunity to give a talk in the city 2000, uh, 2021. So the title of the talk is the translation validations of a loop involving the code optimizing transformations using Petri Netlist models of program. So this is basically the work in progress and uh, me and my two students are working uh, in this project. The, the one is Arakshit Mittal and other is Arakshit Mittal. And this work is basically, in, as it is the working progress, so uh, we just sent this paper to the SEM SRC and um, it won't branch in the SEM SRC grand final event. Well, so uh, let's go further. What is a translation validation? So the programs are often subject to the translated by the optimizing and the parallelizing compiler and if it is translated wrongly that gives a software box so it is very important uh, to um, uh, um, to verify whether uh, this uh, um, the source program and the translated programs are uh, behavioral uh, equivalent or not so uh, we have to develop the equivalence checker which takes the source programs and the target and the translated programs and if it is gives the, if the equivalence checker gives a yes answer that is the two programs the semantically equivalent and if the no answer that is this may not be equivalent so the method is sound but not the complete so some related work is there um, uh, it's basically the several um, code optimizing transformations is reported uh, in the SEM computing survey uh, for example the duplicating down duplicating up boosting up boosting down and the useful moves and uh, mm, uh, uh, and the several uh, uh, validation techniques are also re reported in the several literatures. Um, so I just categorize it to the full part. Uh, hello. Yeah. So uh, the fourth part. First is the bisimulation based method. Uh, second is the inductive inferencing based method. Another is the path based method. And there's a co the proof assistive uh, method to proving the correctness of uh, the program. So the, the bisimulation based method is, uh, so the both bisimulation and the inductive inferencing based method uh, uh, is not terminating. Uh, the termination is not guaranteed. And uh, the bisimulation based method, the first proposed by the Amin Newley, then it is enhanced by the Nicola and Retro, and it is uh, modified by the Kundu and, uh, and uh, that can validate only the structure preserving code transformation. If the code can move beyond the basic block level boundaries, it cannot handle. Um, uh, the second is the inductive inferencing based method. It's uh, it's a basically uh, uh, the use on the scalar programs, and the LLRIP is one of the tools um, which developed it uh, from from this technique. Third is basically the uh, uh, the path based method. So the path based method, uh, the, the first proposed by the Carfa et al, which validate uh, uh, the various code optimizing transformations for the high level synthesis part compiler. But the control structures of the programs is altered. Then it is modified by the Banach et al. So um, the, it's basically the value propagation based method, and further modified by the Chowsky et al. It's an extended value propagation based method. So uh, my work is essentially built on the path-based equivalence checking method, um, and another is the cock proof assistive techniques. So uh, the all path-based equivalence checking method is here. It's a control data flow graph only. Uh, so um, and uh, essentially the underlying model is the finite state machines with the data path. Uh, so uh, here, if you see this type of the transformations, uh, where the two independent loops are there, and one can uh, uh, one can swap these two loops or can parallelize into the thread. So this type of transformations cannot handle by the, um, the CDFGPS equivalent checking method. So um, our observation is that uh, in my previous work, uh, we have developed it, which is published in the ADVA 2017 as a tool and uh, the the theoretical repertoire and published in the ACTA Informatica. The handle this above translations um, um, also the FSLD based method can handle those transformations as well as the loop swapping and the loop shifting transformation. Uh, sorry, the loop swapping and the thread level parallelizing transformation. But the major limitations of this work is basically the huge model size and uh, the correctness of the model constructor is not proved. So that is the one problem. And another is it cannot handle the loop involving the code optimizing transformations. So our problem definitions is like this one. So there is a source programs and there is a translated programs, so compiler manual translator. Uh, it's basically we have used 
one of the automated model constructors, the third party automated model constructors, the Simpress tools, and um, it it generates the two models, the underlying model is a Petri net as we captures the parallelizing transformation. So that's why. And uh, this is the MS and another is the MT. So MS corresponding to the source program, MT corresponding to the translated programs. And the equivalence checker consists of the two modules. One is a path constructor and there's a path uh, uh, based equivalence checker. So um, the path constructor gives a set of paths, that is the QS and the QT, and the path-based equivalence checking method, that is the for all paths in QS, there exists a path in the QT such that their path level are equivalent. That is, the condition of executions are equivalent and the data transformations is match. If it gives the yes answer, that is, these two programs are equivalent, two models are equivalent, that is, the two programs are semantically preserving translations. And if, if it gives the no answer, uh, that uh, may not be. Equivalent. Uh, so the prototype of the tool is given here. You can download these tools and uh, the model construct the same test. You have to run for here. So now we go for the model construct. It's a very brief uh, uh, introduction of the model constructors. Suppose uh, and it's generated by the same test tools. Suppose there's a simple multiplication programs and the corresponding Petrine tool looks like this one. So where um, basically the X, A, X is assigned to, uh, so the A, B, A and B are the inputs and the, the C is basically the output and the X is assigned to A and Y is assigned to B and Z is assigned to zero. So here uh, we can see that is the uh, uh, Z is assigned to X plus Z. So uh, Z is assigned to X plus Z and uh, uh, Y is assigned to the Y minus 1 and there is some conditions that is a, uh, it's a guard condition associated with the transitions Y is greater than 0 and so Y equal to 0 and ultimately it's a Z that is the mult of AB. So here uh, if we compare our previous models with new models uh, in, in our previous models we have seen uh, uh, we have noticed that uh, the, uh, the functions are associated with the transitions. So the post place of the any transitions contains the same value, but in the new model, the functions is associated with the outgoing arc of the Petrinet model. So, and the output of the transition, uh, um, that is the post place of the transitions contains a different value. So, so that techniques reduce the model size a lot. So um, let's take one example of the loop involving transformation. First, we take for the sequential model and then uh, a sequential program, then we go to the parallel program. So here you can see that is that D, uh, D is assigned, uh, D is incremented five times over here. And uh, in the translated program, we just uh, make it the D equal to five. So uh, so the so the, this figure B represents uh, 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 the Petrinet model corresponding to figure A. And the figure D correspond uh, is the Petrin model corresponding to the figure C. Uh, so now um, we take here first to define the equivalence. We have to um, make this. Um, we have to first define the computations, and the computations is the is a sequence of marking from the input to output. And uh, as the loop is there, how many times loop will be executed? We do not know. So uh, for that reasons, we have to cut the loop and break into the model into the path, the, the finite paths. So here uh, the uh, no, um, um, the cut point rule introduction, so the inputs are the cut points, uh, P1, uh, so here the P1 is the cut points and the place containing the package is the cut points, so P3 and the P4 are the cut points and uh, uh, the P5 is the cut points and the paths is basically, uh, um, it's, a, it's a sequence of transitions from the one cut point to the another cut point of, without having any intermediary cut points. So here the dotted bounded is represented the path. So in the figure A, we are giving uh, uh, get, uh, uh, the seven paths alpha 1 to the alpha 7. Now we take a computation. For example, the T1 followed by T2 to the power n, uh, n times it fires, then the T3m times fire, then T4. Now, we can re-retain these computations using this manner, um, that is the del 1, del 2, del, del 3, then the del 4, uh, del, del 4, del 5 to the power n, del 6, del 7 to the power n, uh, uh, m, and then del 8. And initially, that is the reordered 
the coincidence. So here we have to, uh, we are trying to prove that is any compute, the validity of the pathless equivalence checking method, that is any computation can be represented in terms of this path. So initially, so we have seen that is the del A8 is the last member of the computation of the mu P5 and the del A8 is occurs in the path alpha 1. So we delete uh, del A8 and the other members of the path of the alpha 1 is at del 1 and uh, the reordered, uh, so, so the new mu P5 is del 2, del 3 parallel and the del 4, del 5 to the power n, del 6, uh, del 6, del 7 to the power n and the mu p5 to the um, r is alpha 1. Then the last member is the del 6 and the del 7. So the del 6 and the del 7 is the last member of the path alpha 6 and the alpha 7. Uh, so, um, so this will be deleted and the new reordered sequence is this one and um, the alpha 6 and parallel to alpha 7 is append before the alpha 1. Likewise, um, we, have, uh, we have also get the alpha uh, 4 parallel to alpha 5 to the power n. Uh, which is happening to the before the alpha 6 parallel to alpha 7 to the power n and uh, the process terminates so when the new p5 is empty so we have seen that is uh, any computations uh, can be looked upon as a concatenation of the parallel paths so now we have gone to, gone to the equivalence checking method so um, ultimately we have uh, from the original uh, programs that is a figure a we get a set of paths and the figure b we got a set of paths and which gives the path cover also, so now um, um, some correspondence. Uh, hello, uh, hello. Is there any question? No. no question. Okay, fine. Uh, just one minute. Uh, hmm. My screen is visible now. Yes, yes, I can see it. Okay. Well, so uh, actually, uh, so the from figure A, uh, there is a set of paths, five, um, alpha 1 to alpha 7, and uh, in the figure B, there is a set of paths, beta 1 to uh, uh, beta 3. Now, we have checked the equivalence between the a, a, figure A and figure B. So here, um, we have seen that is the alpha of for the path alpha 1, there is no equivalent path uh, in, in figure B. So, um, because uh, 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 for the alpha um, 1 is a candidate path. So, first we find the candidate path. For the alpha 1, the candidate path is basically the beta 1. But the number of the pre places of the path alpha 1 is basically the 3. And um, here is one. So we have to extend uh, this path. So the uh, parallel path of the alpha one is alpha two and the alpha three. And um, the alpha two is equivalent to beta two, um, is basically the beta two because the condition of execution is match and the data transformations is match. So now um, for uh, uh, so 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 this alpha two is streamed out. From this uh, uh, the candidate path set, and uh, then we have seen that is the alpha three and alpha three there is no equivalent path, so we have to extend this path alpha three. So the post path of the alpha three is basically the alpha five and the alpha seven, and um, and we have seen that is the, this frontier that is the alpha three alpha one parallel to alpha three. Um, um, Concatenate to the alpha 5 and the alpha 7 uh, is equivalent to beta 1. And uh, in the path margin, the alpha 4 is uh, parallel to alpha 6 is equivalent to beta 3. And uh, this, uh, uh, the equivalence between two expressions is carried out by the Z3, the uh, SMT solver. Now we take the another example, so it's a parallel example, so where the m equal to 10, we just uh, remove from the outside the loop and the two loops are parallel to each other because uh, there is no dependency relation between two loops. So this is uh, using the simplest model, this is the original Petrinet model uh, um, from, from figure A, uh, from this program and uh, this is basically, uh, this figure is Corresponding to the, um, the translated material model from the translated programs. 
Now, these are the paths um, using the path construction algorithms. We can get the, um, the seven paths. Here is also we get some paths. And we have seen that alpha 1 is equivalent to beta 1, alpha 3 is equivalent to beta 3, alpha 4 is equivalent to beta 4, alpha 6 is equivalent to beta 5. And using the path margin and the path extension, we can get the alpha 2 uh, concatenated to the alpha 5 uh, in parallel to alpha 7 is equivalent to beta 2. Now the uh, small result section as is a work in progress. So we have uh, we, we have compared our um, the previous uh, tools with the recent approach uh, that we have seen. That is that as we put the transition function uh, uh, the function instead of the transition we have put into the outgoing uh, arc of a petri net. So um, drastically reduce of the number of the places and the number of the transitions compared to our previous work and the new work. So the class of transformation we can support uh, that is the uniform and the non-uniform code transformation, code motion across loops and the loop swapping transformations and several um, the thread level parallelizing transformations. Uh, but uh, it's only for the um, read-only shared variables, for the for the writable shared variables it cannot handle. And the limitations if uh, is basically the loop shifting we cannot translated for the array handling programs uh, we cannot handle and uh, we cannot prove that is equivalence check that is complete with respect to this transformation so that's why uh, uh, we plan to uh, uh, incorporate the cog theorem proof uh, in, in our uh, um, uh, work so another the future scopes of the work so the, we have already submitted and uh, the best paper is accepted in the ICS of the category as the best paper uh, best positional paper work. so we make uh, this petrinet further sophistications of the petrinet model so um, uh, uh, here we have seen that uh, uh, the, uh, the instead of the single variables every place is associated with a set of variables and uh, the outgoing arc with the associated with the set of functions. So if we mm, mm, construct this model using this uh, thing, so um, it will be very effective uh, during the equivalence checking phenomenon. And uh, obviously another future scopes is um, basically for the loop shifting translations. If we at all use the front end of uh, our equivalence checker, that is the model constructor, and we can translate it from the PN to single static assignment, and then you, you, you may use the CBMC tools uh, to check the equivalence. And uh, for the high level synthesis part, um, uh, can also use this equivalence checker by the instruction level parallelism and the scheduling behavior to occur uh, for the FSMD method fails. So here from the 3 d code to HTL, so these translations, uh, these verifications is not uh, carried out till now. So if we use some hierarchical modeling, for example, the compositions of the FSMD, if FSMD fails, then we have to, uh, oh, we can go for the, uh, the Petrinet uh, based equivalence checker. Then uh, this is the one of the feature works and this is uh, carried out by myself and one of my collaborator, Ian from the Imperial College. And um, let me go for a quick demo, uh, another of the future uh, um, work we are using. Uh, we, we use this equivalence checker along with some equi uh, some other equivalence checker, uh, uh, the functional equivalence checker, for example, the CLI and the CBMC for the automated, uh, automated evaluation of the computer programming course. So uh, let me go for the a quick demo on that. My uh, terminal is visible? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So here um, we use the docker and we put our uh, um, uh, our new versions of the tools over here. And um, there is basically the three files are there. One is basically the golden solutions and uh, um, the, let's go to the golden solution. And um, it's a basically the, it computes the linears of a program. So, sorry. So this is basically the golden solution, which computes the linear of a program. Um, and uh, 
if i go to the uh, student and solutions repository uh, uh, so there are 160 student uh, 106 student submissions are there and uh, um, there is a config file uh, uh, basically here we have to prove the, uh, we have to uh, uh, that is that the is greater than zero and uh, um, just run uh, our uh, tool takes some time uh, and it's basically the uh, I just uh, demonstrate of, uh, without loop but uh, for the loop it takes some time uh, yeah and uh, if you see that results the csv file is there i just uh, here um, So this is basically the score out of 100. So some um, submissions it gives a partial marking, some submissions, uh, maximum submissions is 100, and uh, some submissions is got zero. And uh, uh, so these are other results so we can uh, get it from uh, 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 during our experimentations. And thank you, uh, uh, I'm happy to take the question. Okay, thank you very much. So now I would like to invite questions. Please, if you have any questions. Any questions? Any questions? So I have one more question already. Uh, so yeah. so you, are, you are using this thing uh, for, uh, have, you, have you sort of implemented, I missed some part of the talk though, so pardon me for that. Uh, I was wondering if, uh, you know, uh, some, 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 you know, uh, test plugin kind of a thing which somebody could use in an IDE to try this thing out. Uh, mm -hmm. And when, let's say, uh, checking their code for for the target you're looking at. So have you uh -huh. made something like that, some initial tools which somebody could try? Yeah, actually, um, the tool means uh, basically there are two tools. One is basically the automated uh, program evaluations, which obviously uh, we are using several functional equivalence checkers. Uh, it's a tool chain for the functional equivalence checker. Another is my own tools, so which in housely we are built. Uh, so the which tools you are talking? So I'm talking about the developer. I'm talking about the developer centric. Uh, uh, integration of this idea into some tool chain which could be eventually used in an IDE because ultimately uh, I, I suppose this is to be used for checking some kind of code right yeah yeah so, yeah well well uh, got it actually the in the previous uh, um, the tool of the, uh, which was published in the ATVA 2017 we integrated with the Eclipse plugin and uh, we also so, Currently, in the current versions of the tool, there is no ID, but um, um, we are planning to integrate it with some uh, the, yeah, um, the Eclipse plugin with uh, uh, these tools. Uh, okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you. For, for the automated evaluations for the computer programming course, 
um, uh, we are planning to integrate the entire uh, the backends uh, with the Moodle. So that's the we are working on it, such that, and uh, it will be the free software such that from any university. So is there is relevant somewhere if, if let's say, uh, yeah, in some yeah, it's a console based tools. It's a now it is the console based tools, and uh, we are also keep on um, uh, late. So, I just one minute. Uh, I can share uh, this GitHub link, and yeah, so right. GitHub link is yeah. also available in this presentation. So once uh, once uh, um, it can share. Uh, uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's what I was looking for. That if there is a tool or you have a GitHub uh, repository where. No, 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 just one minute. I just uh, shared with you. Yeah. Um, just one minute. If it is there in your presentation, that's also okay. I mean, we can look it up. No, it is. It is. It is already pre um, okay. it's yeah. presentation. So. Oh. Great, great. Yeah, anyway, you have shared the presentation slides, I guess. So you would have uploaded yeah, it. I have, I have already shared the presentation. Yes, yes. Yeah, I'll so, just, I'll also, I'll just give uh, um, this link to you. Just check this link. Whether, uh, yes, I got it. Auto well, yes, I got it. Auto -well. So, so there is a, if, if it is the private repository, then um, we will make no, it. No, it's public. accessible. It's accessible. I could see. Uh, fine, fine. Fine. 20 fine. Days, Twenty-eight days ago, some commit was there. Yeah, that's yeah. that's the one. Yeah. Thank you. So there is another question. Uh, yeah. Uh, in the experimentation, uh, are all the programs syntactically correct? Uh, uh, yeah, it's a very good question. So um, uh, we assume that all programs, there is no syntactical error. Um, so if there is a syntactical error, so our method uh, cannot uh, evaluate uh, uh, these things. So for this purpose, we are planning to integrate some automated program repairing tools. Um, and then first, it checks the syntax error using the automated program repairing tools and then it goes to the semantics equivalence check or the, uh, um, the semantic level check. Oh. Okay. Uh, are there any other questions? If not, uh, so I think uh, please uh, end the talk here. Thank you very much. Uh, Swami so, so, so one request is that uh, so if you kindly experiment uh, these tools for your uh, the computer programming course so uh, that is the cs1 course and give mm -hmm. me some feedback it will be very useful for us uh, to improve in these tools so that's why uh, so i give this demonstrations over here uh, such that uh, we can get some feedback uh, from the sure, sure. sure definitely yeah thank you So yeah, I think uh, with that talk, uh, this uh, session ends. Uh, thank you very much. And I'll hand it over to Balwinder now. Yeah. So thank you, Nitin, uh, for chairing the session. And thank you, uh, all the speakers, uh, for wonderful talks. And we look forward to seeing uh, the participants tomorrow, uh, where we have additional set of uh, interesting talks. Uh, so thank you once again. And we'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you.